end, right here at Wakanda. I think Mel might even be on his feet by then. You're watching Channel 5. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with news that seems to have caught both economists and the Bush administration by surprise. The Labor Department said today that the nation's unemployment rate, rather than staying level or going down, as many had anticipated, went up last month to its highest level in more than eight years, 7.8%. The Federal Reserve Board decided to take action almost immediately to stimulate the economy. Within an hour, the nation's central bank lowered the discount rate to 3%, which led the major banks to lower their prime lending rates to 6%. Even those Americans who have jobs get worried when the unemployment rate goes up, and at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in the middle of an election campaign, they get very worried. At the White House tonight, ABC's Britt Hume. The president was holding a rare news conference on Capitol Hill to promote Republican proposals to reform the handling of medical malpractice claims. But as it has often this year, gloomy economic news intruded. Today, of course, it was the unemployment rate. One, it's not good news. Two, unemployment has always been a lagging indicator. Three, the economy grew in the first quarter, and we're confident that it will grow in the second quarter. The president said it would help that the Federal Reserve had moved to cut interest rates, and he said it would help even more if Congress would pass his economic growth package. There seems little chance of that now, though, and today's news will surely make it harder for Mr. Bush, despite his evident frustration, to continue to claim in campaign speeches that public alarm about the economy is generated by the media. Endless polls, weird talk shows, crazy groups every Sunday telling you what you think. 80 92% of the news on the economy being negative when the economy grew, admittedly slowly, but grew at 2.7 in the first quarter. 92% negative. What kind of reporting is that? Unfortunately for the president, this week's reporting has included new layoff announcements from three major companies. Aetna Life and Casualty, which will drop 4,800 workers, Hughes Aircraft, which will lay off 9,000, and Alcoa, which will let 2,100 workers go. Mr. Bush's Democratic opponent was quick today to seize on all of this. We are out of step. It's the United States that's out of step. And they have got to quit making excuses for their failures to get this country in step if we're going to have growth and jobs and opportunity. The president is correct that unemployment is a lagging indicator in the sense that its improvement lags behind other statistics in an economic recovery. The problem for him is that unemployment is also the most politically sensitive of all economic numbers. Britt Hume, ABC News, the White House. An indication of how sensitive unemployment is, Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill raced through a bill today that would extend unemployment benefits for those who are about to lose them. The extension will be for as many as 26 more weeks. And President Bush, on his way to Camp David for the holiday, said that he is ready to sign it. It is the third such extension, and the way things are going, very few people are willing to bet it'll be the last. Here's ABC's Bob Jamison. It is difficult to persuade employees of Hughes Aircraft that the recovery is real. The company announced this week that 9,000 of them would be laid off. So every day they're announcing new cutbacks in jobs, and, you know, so I don't, where it's coming back, I don't see. Every day you go into work and you wonder, well, is this going to be me next? California is having the most trouble climbing out of recession. With the cutbacks in defense spending, particularly the cutbacks in aerospace, it becomes very difficult for the California economy to rebound. In the Midwest, where the recovery is strongest, some manufacturers are hiring but they are doing so cautiously. Job growth is only a fraction of what it has been as previous recessions ended. Retailers have seen a modest increase in sales, but even in the Midwest, consumers are wary about the recovery. You really don't know what's gonna to happen to your job, so therefore you don't want to get into too much debt. Everybody's living a bit from day to day. Basically, I am holding back, I guess. That reality that we're not gonna be able to grow ourselves out of this economy right now is starting to set in. Consumers are feeling their living standards squeezed. In the Northeast, there are signs of improvement in the dominant banking and financial industries and in manufacturing. But companies are not hiring, and economists say the country is working its way out from the excesses of the last decade. From the debt that consumers and businesses took on, the overbuilding and overstaffing that characterized the 1980s, it's going to take a long time before we can truly say we're in an economic recovery. And because of Washington's huge debt, the government is reluctant to use two of its most effective tools to stimulate the economy, tax cuts and increased spending. 
Even with lower interest rates, most economists believe that for some time, the recovery will take two steps forward and one step back. Bob Jamison, ABC News, New York. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials lost more than 23 points to close at 33.30. The trading was heavy. For the week, stocks gained nearly 48 points. The market is closed tomorrow for the July 4th holiday. In a moment, some of the other news. Ross Perot, his denials do not always match the evidence. Secrets of the Cold War, American spies who vanished into the Soviet prison system, and the anger over broken promises in a Georgia county. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, brought to you by AT&T. In our universe, there is always the unknown, the unpredictable. All we can do is prepare for it. AT&T is now installing FASTAR. It can detect a cable cut instantly, so 800 calls can get back in, in minutes instead of hours. We can send flowers for any occasion, anywhere, but only if our 800 service is up and running. Our 800 service isn't just a phone line, it's a lifeline. I miss you. AT&T has the most reliable 800 service, period. AT&T, call us. To survive out here, you need a rifle, a friend like Elvis here, and of course, Domino's Pizza. It's our 99-cent carryout special. With any regular priced pizza, get a one-topping medium for 99 cents. Nobody knows like Domino's, right, Elvis? How you like pizza at home? Your rugged routine, day after day. It's even harder when athlete's foot routinely comes back. Get prescription strength Lotrimin AF. It kills all causes of athlete's foot. Lotrimin AF, the finish line for athlete's foot. In some other presidential politics today, Ross Perot was told he has a spot on the California ballot this November, the 20th state where his name will appear. The Los Angeles Times reported today that two of Mr. Perot's superiors when he was in the Navy judged him to be unfit. They said emotionally maladjusted for a Navy career. Mr. Perot has declined to comment. ABC's Mort Dean, who covers the Perot campaign for us, has a report tonight on an element of the Perot campaign style, the vigorous denial as a good offense. No, no, Perot's no, defense against unflattering news the is the yeah, absolute we'll denial. He denies his former company, EDS, ever had a rigid policy about personal appearance which included a ban on facial hair, beards. Well, I didn't prohibit beards. I mean, this is goofy stuff. These are myths that exist. But page 16 of his company's employee policy manual, given to ABC News by a former EDS worker, clearly states, beards may not be worn. The policy led to a discrimination suit against Perot's company by a worker who grew a beard after converting to Judaism. The employee was fired. On ABC News earlier this week, Perot denied he ever heard of the case. I have no knowledge of the case you mentioned. But it is a widely publicized case, fought and lost by Perot's firm. A federal judge ordered the man reinstated. Great show. Thank Perot you, sir. denies he's a power broker. He's allergic to any suggestion that he's a political insider. He hotly denies it was his pull that brought in over $128 million in federal, state, and city money to develop an airport on and near land he and his son owned in Fort Worth, Texas. I never here. once came to Fort Worth to lobby. R rest my case. Call the mayor tomorrow. Check it out. Well, we did check it out with the mayor. He says he did meet with Ross Sr. in Fort Worth and Dallas. I met with Junior all the time, Ross Jr., and I met with Sr. frequently. Some former employees, even those who respect Perot, say he has a convenient memory. It is a memory that will be tested more and more through the campaign. Horton Dean, ABC News, New York. In other news today, there's a warning on Capitol Hill about the financial health of the nation's largest health insurer. 94 million Americans depend on Blue Cross Blue Shield plans to pay their medical bills. Today, a Senate committee was told that mismanagement and wasteful spending has put some Blue Cross Blue Shield local plans in danger. Here's ABC's Bill Greenwood. Investigators say 30 of the nation's 73 Blue Cross Blue Shield plans are in serious financial trouble and cite poor management as the number one reason. While Blue Cross is a nonprofit organization, Senators were told some local operations tried to get into profit-making businesses, but lost millions of dollars requiring an increase in insurance premiums. 
Investigators found that some financially pressed offices put elected officials on the payrolls as consultants and provided top employees with lavish perks like chauffeured limos and country club privileges. One Blue Cross local paid off a paternity suit against its chief executive. Blue Cross was accused of sometimes ignoring state regulations, but senators were told the regulators more frequently were to blame. A lot of regulators have ignored the Blue Cross plans because of the general assumption that Blue Cross is like motherhood apple pie and uh, the charitable hospital down the street. There aren't any problems with it. There never be any problems. Blue Cross headquarters are in Chicago, where Bernard Trisnowski is paid $622,000 a year, but has no control over local operations. Each Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan is a, is a separate, independent corporation. Their relationship with the association is by virtue of the license that they have to use the name Blue Cross and Blue Shield. With health costs out of control, Congress seems determined to make an example of Blue Cross Blue Shield. The series of Senate hearings will formulate legislation to bring financial abuses under control. Bill Greenwood, ABC News, Washington. There's another story tonight about health and society which calls some conventional wisdom into question. It's about so-called crack babies, some of the children born to mothers who use crack cocaine. They're often in terrible medical shape, and up until now, everyone has blamed the cocaine. As ABC's Al Dale reports, that conventional wisdom is now being questioned. The pictures are familiar. Premature, underweight babies, trembling and in distress, destined for difficult lives. But two recent studies on newborn humans and monkeys show that so-called crack babies may not exist. I think our opinions and attitudes and ideas of what cocaine is doing will have to be reevaluated. Dr. Jane Ellis at the Yerkes Primate Center in Atlanta says that laboratory monkeys born with cocaine in their systems were just as healthy as those born without the drug. A simultaneous study of newborns at Atlanta's Grady Hospital has produced other evidence that cocaine may not be at fault for health and behavior problems. The babies appeared quite normal behaviorally and there was no reason for the interaction problems that people are talking about. The babies in distress, Dr. Cole says, were born prematurely to mothers who may or may not have taken cocaine, but who had unhealthy lifestyles, including alcohol, smoking, drug abuse, and little prenatal care. Cocaine was blamed, she says, because it was something everybody was talking about. Seizing on cocaine as the villain has led prosecutors in some states to jail women whose babies were born with cocaine in their systems. Using laws meant to convict drug dealers, authorities charge some mothers with distributing cocaine to the fetus. In suburban Atlanta, Darla Luster was arrested and her baby was taken away after she admitted smoking crack cocaine during her pregnancy. I feel used. I feel like it doesn't have anything to do with the baby that I want to love. No one in either research project says cocaine use is harmless. Possible long-range effects are still being studied, but they would like to see the term crack baby fade into history because, given the mother's lifestyles, it is impossible to single out cocaine as the cause of their baby's problems. Al Dale, ABC News, Atlanta. Canadian troops have made it to Sarajevo. We'll have that story when we come back. off every square foot of vinyl and ceramic floor and wall tile. Do I stay master carpet? $11.99 installed. All wood floors up to 50% off. Wall covering $2.99 a roll. Mini blinds. Buy one, get three free. Nobody beats up to 50% off every ceramic. And vinyl tile. And color carpet. Fly in now. Color tiles coast to coast July 4th price buster. In Sunday. This castle once had 26 bathrooms. It'd be nice if one of them still worked. Why? What if my diarrhea comes back? Relax. You took my Imodium AD caplets. Just once. I usually take the pink stuff two or three times. Imodium AD is much better. Imodium AD caplets are so effective, they often work in one dose. Instead of dose after dose after dose, like the pink stuff. Ready to go? Before the sun set? Imodium AD for diarrhea, the choice for one dose relief. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS. Yeah, but... Airbag, sir. leather. 
Everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. Nice. The U.S. government is planning to start flying food and medicine into Sarajevo tomorrow, provided the fighting there does not flare up again. After a long and dangerous trip, the Canadian peacekeeping force has finally made it overland to the Sarajevo airport. ABC Jacques Grenier is there. The arrival of the UN force could be the first step in opening Sarajevo airport to a steady flow of aircraft bringing in relief supplies. But the UN troops are still overwhelmingly outnumbered by Serbian forces besieging this city. Easy trip, eh? I'll tell you uh, with a beer, sir. I had to use uh, force diplomacy. Force diplomacy. Yesterday was uh, tense day. Eh? Yes. It took the Canadians three days to travel cautiously the 200 miles from their base in Croatia. They had to beware of landmines and ambushes, and at one point their commander had to threaten a Serbian force which tried to block his way. They saw that we were uh, really de determined to, to go through and uh, change our mind. A few relief flights have gotten through. This one today organized by the U.S. group AmeriCares brought in 15 tons of medical supplies. But Serbian insistence on searching the supplies for arms has kept them overnight at the airport. In Sarajevo, some donated food was distributed today, but much more is needed. These people need everything, from the flour to the sprout, everything. Inside the airport perimeter, things were quiet today for the UN peacekeepers, but just beyond their lines, they could hear the sounds of battle between Serbian forces and the Muslims and Croats defending this city. Jacques Renier, ABC News, Sarajevo. Still overseas, the South African president, F.W. de Klerk, has accused the African National Congress of trying to overthrow the government by organizing mass demonstrations. Mr. de Klerk says he will take all necessary steps, as he put it, to prevent that from happening. In France, last week it was farmers blocking the roads, trying to get higher government price support. Today, the truckers are angry because of tough new traffic laws. The blockade has stranded thousands of tourists and forced many factories to shut. In our next segment, The Secret War. Did American spies disappear behind the Iron Curtain? it all last night I was tossing and turning tossing and turning all night can't sleep try unisom in medical tests people fell asleep faster and slept better with unisom than without now I'm sleeping and sleeping all night take unisom for faster better sleep or when you have pain and also can't sleep take unisom with pain relief wrong. This Charmin's not squeezably soft. It's the Flocker. Shut down the line. If it's not squeezably soft, it's not Charmin. Squeezably soft? I thought all tissues were the same. You must be new. We take every sheet of Charmin and fluff it to make it squeezably soft. Softer than regular tissue? Yeah. You can even see how fluffing makes us soft. You're right. It is softer. It's so squeezable. That's why it's so pleasable. And that's why we got to fix the fluffer. Hey, what's this? Wow. The fluffer's working. You fixed it. Not bad for your first day. Charmin's so pleasable. Because it's so squeezable. Every sports sedan is supposed to do well in the fast lane. But what about these lanes? At Lexus, we've achieved extremely tight tolerances between all major body panels. So not only does the ES300 look like it's put together well, it actually is put together well. Hey, is Tegrin shampoo on sale? Nope, that's their new lower price. But it's still just as tough on dandruff, right? Sure, Tegrin doesn't do less, just cost less. Sounds right to me. Tegrin, the right dandruff shampoo at the right price. Another powerful indicator that the Cold War is behind us, President Bush announced today that all the tactical nuclear weapons that had been deployed in Western Europe 
to deter a Soviet attack have now been removed and brought back to the United States where they will be destroyed. There are, of course, still many things about the Cold War which are not resolved. What, for example, happened to American servicemen who were shot down while they were spying on the Soviet Union? ABC News has obtained the results of a new Pentagon study which lays out just how many Americans participated in such missions and who lost their lives. Our Pentagon correspondent is Bob Zelnick. For more than 20 years, the U.S. launched thousands of dangerous and highly secret air missions along and often across the borders of the Soviet Union. Their purpose, to gather intelligence on Soviet troop movements and air defenses. During the height of the Cold War, 39 U.S. planes were shot down. Of the 364 crewmen who took part in these missions, 187 were rescued or returned, 42 died, and 135 are still unaccounted for, or what the Pentagon calls, not recovered, fate unknown. For many families, the fate of loved ones is still unknown. We want to know what happened to our brother. John Berg's brother, Eddie, was shot down over the Sea of Japan in 1952. His plane, a B-29, was on a spy mission. His family was told only that he was missing. He was eventually declared dead. Now, following Boris Yeltsin's disclosure that Americans were held in custody early in the Cold War, the Bergs hope Eddie may still be alive. Intelligence documents obtained by ABC News show that the U.S. government believed Americans might have been held in Soviet custody in the 1950s. One example, on April 8, 1950, a Navy privateer gathering electronic intelligence was shot down in the Baltic Sea near the Soviet border, but was seen floating intact. Ten crewmen disappeared. John Noble, an American civilian who was being held in Siberia at that time on unfounded charges, heard about eight survivors of the Navy plane being held nearby. Eight of the ten that did survive were immediately told by the Soviets that they have been declared dead, State Department documents show the U.S. made secret approaches to Moscow asking about surviving Americans. But the Soviets denied holding anyone. The Soviets had two good reasons to lie. If the planes had been shot down in international airspace, that could provoke U.S. retaliation. And if the planes had penetrated deep into Soviet territory, the Soviets wanted that weakness kept from the U.S. military. The U.S., on the other hand, did not press the Soviets because the missions were top secret. Many of the losses were never made public. When we went overseas, we couldn't tell people where we came from, what we flew, what we were doing, nothing. The big cover story was the fact that they were just on training flights. Even immediate families were told lies. I didn't realize that it was full of electronic gear and that they were uh, actually trying to rouse the radar installations along the northern and the southern rim of the Iron Curtain. The web of secrecy was pierced when a U-2 spy plane flown by Francis Gary Powers was shot down in 1959. The Soviets put him on trial for espionage. He was later returned. But families like the Bergs have spent a lifetime in limbo. Long before my mom died, she put a headstone in the cemetery because she wants the world to know she did have a son. And, uh, It'd be fun to bring him home. Yeah. Put the headstone away. Bob Zelnick, ABC News, Washington. We'll have more news in just a moment. The body design is indicative of the level of refinement throughout. What strikes you is noise. There isn't any. Optional V6 provides as much power as conventional V8. It feels far more expensive than it is. Driver's side airbag is standard. Bigger and better in every way. The Toyota Camry has received so many accolades, and now there's more room to accommodate them. Introducing the all-new seven-passenger Camry wagon. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Oh, what people do to clean tough stains under the rim. Because for some bowl cleaners, that's a real stretch. Try a different angle. The angle neck of Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. It easily goes under the rim and wipes out stains and germs. Don't get bent out of shape. Get Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner, the heavyweight with a powerful angle on cleaning. 
On the surface, it's a perfect neighborhood. But beneath the surface, there could be trouble brewing in the septic system. Ask anyone who's had a backup. Better to maintain your system. That includes Ridex once a month. Ridex helps keep your system free-flowing. And regular maintenance, including Ridex, helps prevent backup. Look beneath the surface. Use Ridex once a month. When my Raymond gets constipated, uh -oh. I give him Phillips milk of magnesia. Phillips is the only one that soothes that stomach acidy feeling Ray sometimes gets. Maureen, put that away. Only Phillips soothes your upset stomach, then relieves constipation overnight. I think we should throw a party. I'd know what you'd serve. A town full of children with a terrible secret. Sexual abuse by the priest. As adults, they track him down to bring him to justice. Get the Here cops. Prime time tonight. Our final report tonight is about garbage, which in the case of a small rural county in Georgia is making an awful lot of people angry. What we have here is another example of why people are frustrated or angered by government. In Berrien County, Georgia, they had no reason not to put their faith in their local officials. After all, they were neighbors. Here's ABC's Rebecca Chase. In the South Georgia County of tobacco farms and pecan groves, taxpayers are angry that they are stuck with a $3 million debt for this garbage recycling machine that they never approved and does not work. It makes me want to fight. It makes me want to challenge the system. It makes me want to hire and go with a group of farmers to an attorney and say, listen, this is not right. In 1988, Berrien County had no place to put its garbage because the landfill was full. So the county commission decided to buy this garbage machine with revenue bonds which do not require voter approval. It's just a comedy of errors that's cost people a lot of money. The machine was supposed to work like this one in Tennessee, sorting and recycling up to 90% of the county's garbage and paying for itself by selling the recycled materials and charging user fees. That is how then Commissioner Joe Stallings promised it would work here. It did not. There's nothing physically wrong with the machine. It's been the, it's been people. Stallings blames people for not giving the machine a chance, but most people here blame him for misleading them about how much it costs to operate the plant. It was five times more expensive than he said it would be. The machine turned the garbage into fuel pellets and compost, but no one found a buyer. So the unsold material piled up outside, nothing more than exposed trash. The state has now ordered the plant shut down as an environmental hazard. People here in Berrien County are so angry that they voted out the county commissioner who bought the garbage machine. And now they have filed a lawsuit saying they should not have to pay for it. I think the people of Berrien County should have had a privilege to vote on it. Meanwhile, to pay for the plant, taxes have been tripled. I think we got a big bill to pay for and uh, get no use out of it. These people that did this, they, they're voted out, they're gone. But the consequences of what they've done are going to live with us for years. The final insult? Taxpayers are now forced to have their trash hauled to another county's landfill 50 miles away and pay yet again to get rid of their garbage. Rebecca Chase, ABC News, Nashville, Georgia. And that's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Have a nice evening. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Thursday. I got a lot of Quite clean. Has he got guts? Stay off the ropes. He don't look good. And watch yourself in the clinches. All it takes is money. Try a new step at the oldest game in town. The Sting 2. Thursday. Small dents, dings, scratches, scrapes, wrinkles, rust? For you, a terrific deal. At Minko, we deal with dents and dings every day. So call during Minko's Small Dents Big Deal Days. Whoa, look at Tommy. He's so stoned. This is totally happening. Look what's happened to him. You know what I look like. Such a mess. What a loser. Yeah, this weed is definitely gross. Ever since he started smoking pot, he's gross. Like everyone's doing, huh? It's so uncool. They're really into me. 
They think I'm so... Out of it. He's really out of it. When severe weather hits central Iowa, turn to the storm team that keeps you in touch. At Channel 5, three meteorologists use their expertise to track dangerous storms. With the exclusive Guardian Lightning Tracker, Pam Dale, Rick Mitchell, and Dave Rexroth will warn you first during severe storm conditions. When you need to know...